on behalf of Faith Network of Manchester and this Motherhood Centre, particularly tonight because I met some of you at the town hall. You've been there all day with us, and then some of you somewhere else. So really, really, I'm very grateful for everyone coming to join us. Thank you so much. That includes those people who were there with me this afternoon, and also my lovely, lovely ladies who went on a trip with us, with me, Heather, Anne. And you know what? They've been organising a fabulous event throughout the week, Wednesday, another day, and then they made it to this today as well. We started off this Sabonicia memorial event last Friday in a call in Chawton Church, and this is our last one. So thank you to Heather and her lovely team, Jackie, and the other Jackie, and you. And where's my push? Is he around here somewhere? He helped us set us up, and Jolly came to open the door. So really, I'm really, really grateful. So that's my speech about the welcome. So everybody has spoken beautifully. I've learned so much from you. Julie, I've learned so much from you. I've learned so much from you. Everybody shared their own personal experiences, but they came out with the same messages of unity, of fighting, and their own personal experiences. I've written down some notes, and I want to share what my experience has been. Uh, like everyone else, I have only general knowledge about this genocide, about what happened in Bosnia. Like, I, like everybody else, I helped to see what it was going to be. And I learned quite a lot from my friends, and I'll talk about the real in a minute, who I'll introduce soon. However, visiting Sarajevo, Sabonic, and Tuzla, and you know what? It was a real honor indeed to go and go to work together and to see the whole thing. And there are three things I want to share with you. First of all, the massacre of the men and young boys led to their death. Ambushed, as you saw in the film, and buried in mass graves, and then reburied with their parts, body parts still missing. The video we watched in the gallery that you mentioned of the was, I'll never forget. The scene of my friends who are here with me, we remember of one father calling his son, Narmin, Narmin, come down, we are safe. These are Serbian friends. And you know what? He was calling his son down to death. He did not know. And that scene, I'll never forget. Terrible, terrible scene. The other thing that I felt strongly about is violence against women. All my life I've been fighting it. I've raised awareness about it in my drama series. In my second novel, Typhoon, I described the fate of a 16-year-old young woman raped and how she remains traumatized by that experience all her life. And it is only later in her 50s she's pushed by a sister, forced to share her agonizing secret, her shame. She cries out to her sister, I've had thousands of bats, but I'm still unclean. Now imagine this scenario, this is one example to illustrate. Imagine the situation of thousands of women in Bosnia, Muslim women who normally do not have a relationship apart from their husband, being systematically raped by so many people, so many men, deliberately so as a weapon of war, to impregnate them and leave a legacy of shame for them. Imagine the reality of these women, how they feel, the shame of my character, my novel, but these are real women here. The horror facing their families, facing your husband, knowing you've been raped by so many other men. And then worst of all, after the war ended, they had to face the very same men in the streets. How do you live in that scenario? Well, some women, is it any wonder, had actually abandoned their homes. And we learned all this through a very special center we went to call Medica Center, where they sort of deal with support of these women. So that was the second thing I want to share with you. The third thing that I want to share with you is the hall, that scene, that big hall where 3,000 people were gathered, supposedly safe, seeking refuge from the Dutch wall in the barracks. And it was agonizing brought home to me that the Bosnians were let down by geography, geography of where they were physically located. Imagine if Bosnia was here in England or in France or in Portugal so much near, the whole world would know about it. The whole world would get involved. Am I making sense? Does everybody realize what I'm saying? They were far away. 
they were in the eastern part of Europe. And the other thing that struck me, my God, they were mountains, they were forests. They were hidden, they were ambushed in those. And it's in the forest that they were chased. So I believe the geography let them down too. The lesson to be learned from this genocide is, and you all mentioned this, every single one of your speakers, it started off as a hatred, revenge for the past centuries, for the Ottoman Empire's invasion. Strangely, as that lady said in the film, they were killed for one thing only, their name, their Muslim name. As we spoke with our host, Ristad, he said we were just like everybody else. The only difference was our name. There was no difference between Christians and Muslims. And he said, most were not even practicing Muslims. We are far more Muslims than they were, but they were killed for their name. Finally, I want to end on a positive note. What we also learned is that, and this came across from the example that Aksa used, Monera, this wonderful woman, and other women, that these women have become true heroes, wonderful survivors, rebuilding their lives with their men supporting each other, and above all, coming to terms with their personal losses. Some still wanting to find, and this is sad part, remains of their loved ones. They still don't know where the foot is, where the heart is. Can you imagine 20 years still waiting, not knowing where your husband is, or your father is, or your son is? Also, what we learn from there is their big generosity of heart. They learn to forgive. But they're warning us, just as Afsal said, just as Rahul was said, just as Julie said, learning us this can happen anywhere, the dangers of hatred, saying this, this can happen anywhere in the world, we here in Britain, I have seen it at this time during the aftermath of Brexit in Britain itself. I noticed the other side of hatred. So that is my bit about my, my visit. I want to share with you my personal thing. And now, Guess what? I have the honor, the privilege to introduce the very chief guest <laughs> of this evening, our Bosnian sisters. And because Dudi is the eldest sister, we are giving her the honor to tell us about experience. But I'm not going to call her yet because Dudi is a very, very special lady for me. So apart from being a Bosnian refugee, she's a very special person in my life. We have together huge respect and love for each other. She's a marvelous, marvelous friend, not just to me, to everybody, the whole world. <laughs> everybody loves her. She's a friend, a sister, a fan, and guess what? A former student of mine at Hume Adult Education Center. <coughs> I met her here, like I still did probably, on the second day of their arrival in Manchester, in a mosque in Cheatham Hill. I became good friends with her and our lovely family, Nazira, the little girl. You came later and rest of my and the rest of your team and their young children. Like many Muslim families, we were very eager to help. And I was one of those people trying to help them to settle in England. And guess what? Their first Eid was spent at my house. We had Eid dinner sitting on the floor, and that was the first chance to try spicy food. <laughs> and then, do you remember that time? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Her family yeah. members, including her mother, who later became very special people in my life and friends, I have enjoyed their marvelous hospitality. They are very generous indeed. And as Dudia know, I love, love her delicious potato and cheese pie. Yeah. Oh, that is my love. She, and also, Dudia is a qualified chef, Marshall. She was a qualified chef making dinners for 300, or you could tell us about it, many, many people. And she treated us to a lovely cooking. She was my student at my center while she learned English. She was a very popular student. Very popular. I'm not making it up. She was. <laughs> Everybody loved her hugely from around the world. They loved listening to Dudia communicating in a broken English. It was broken in those days, especially. I also involved her in her writing projects. We produced a book about women, you remember that? And her work by Gatehouse Books. Dudia had a lovely time in getting her work printed and launched and published. Remember that? <laughs> Most of you know. I'm an author and write novels. Well, I, guess what? I have immortalized Dudia. You can check this in my novel, Me Presenting My Work, of course. I put Dudia in my first novel that I was writing at the time. Very rarely do I do this, but I did in Dudia's case. There is a chapter, chapter 48, where my heroine, Zaybano, is talking about asking questions, answering questions about faith, 
And Lucia is one of those people who asks questions about 